This week, Kathy and Dave roll into B Rod or Custom in Knoxville, Tennessee, to learn about the extraordinary paint systems from Exalta. We'll see every step from prep to painting of a classic VW that turns this bug a beautiful shade of blue. So sit back and enjoy some eye candy next on Performance TV. you but I think I'm gonna like spending the day here welcome to this week's performance TV coming to you from B rod or custom in Knoxville Tennessee yeah this is a nice place if I die and I get to go to heaven this is exactly where you're gonna find me I'm gonna see if the guys are in uh, check stuff out all right sounds like a good idea well you know what some of these beautiful paint jobs that we see here it takes a lot of time and prep and we're gonna find out how you get to something like our ice cream truck or our beautiful Mustang thanks to our friends at Exalta so what do you say we go see if Dave is caught up with PJ and let's go inside I love my job because I get to meet dedicated professionals like PJ here Tell me a little bit about your company. Well, it's a little old barn in Knoxville, Tennessee, back in the woods. It's a warm, happy place, and that's why I build all these unique vehicles that I built for people across the whole United States. They come to me. I really don't advertise. They just, they find me. Right, right. What's that Mustang that you just got done? Oh, with? Amy's. Right. Yeah, the pilot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a 67 Mustang, uh, candy apple red with the, the gray stripes, but what's uh, really special about it. It has one of our platforms under it. Oh. But Anna's got an F-14 joystick as a shifter because she's a pilot. And the gauges are airplane gauges. So it, it kind of draws off her, my customer. I see. And that ice cream truck of yours. Oh, that's yeah. Wild. Yeah, that's my little grocery getter, I guess, or my ice cream getter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's I've a been, working ice cream truck. Yes, I do sell ice cream out of it. Killer. And all these uh, projects that you've got in here. Oh, wow. Yeah, I got, uh, let's start off, 60 Corvette, 62 Corvette, 63 Corvette, 67 Corvette, and 70 Corvette. Oh, can't wait to see. But well, we're going to go back to Kathy, and we're going to see how this process gets started. You know, we have seen some fabulous projects that are underway here, and just like this finished project with the Mustang, that's why we brought in Chris Edwards from Exalted. Chris, if we want a paint job that looks like we can dive into, like this Mustang, we must prep properly right to start with. Absolutely. It's the foundation of any great paint job. Uh, PJ has gone ahead and done a media strip to get all of the rust and all the old paint off of these panels. And he's done a chemical treatment to make sure that the metal's all good and clean. Then he'll put an epoxy primer over the top of it. So sure that's protected. We're doing something like that. How long does that normally take? Is there certain things we really need to look for with the epoxy part? Well, the epoxy part, the epoxy itself is sprayed on in basically a one coat. It's flashed for just a few minutes, about 10 minutes. A second coat is applied. And then he'll let it sit for about four to eight hours, depending. And if there's any body work that needs to be done with body filler, he'll go ahead and take care of that at that point. OK, then what do we do next? At that point, it's time to put some primer filler on. So PJ will go ahead and spray on three coats of urethane primer with a nice flash in between. And then about four hours later, or even overnight, he'll come back and block that nice and smooth so that, that it's all ready for this. Well, I tell you what, we are going to get some of those tips about how to make sure that our surface is smooth. And let's check in with PJ now. All right, guys, I just got done spraying the Chroma Base 2K urethane primer. And I got it put on there, three coats. That's how I like to do it. So I make sure I get covered really good. So after that, I put the uh, guide coat on here. And what the guide coat does, it helps me see the imperfections of the little pin holes or even little scratches. And it works great. Let me show you here. So you, a little wet sanding. I use 400 grit to kind of cut and go. So in circle of motion, see, wow, look at this. All of a sudden, popped up imperfection. So what we're going to do, we're going to sand that thing out. So basically, you just keep on sanding, find that imperfection. Sometimes you have to come back and kind of spot in some places that you've burnt through, and that's normal. Don't feel bad that you've done it. Okay, that's everybody's done it, and it's nature of the beast. So anyways, I'm going to get this thing sanded, 
After this, it'll be ready to seal and paint. You know, there's still a lot more that goes into getting to a ride like this. Yeah, check out another project they have here at B-Rod or Custom. This Corvette is going to be absolutely stunning when they get done with it. Well, you know what? When we come back, we've got our next step that will help us seal the deal in getting our VW Bug done. We'll have that and more just when it's away here on Performance TV. Performance TV is being brought to you by Exalta Coating Systems. We paint winners. Z-Max, the one product for your engine, transmission, and fuel system. Wet Sounds, hearing is believing. And by Sawblade, quality American-made weld-to-order bandsaw blades. Welcome back to Performance TV. We're here at B Rod or Custom. I am just itching to paint that car, but I can't do it just yet. Why not? Well, first, you know, we have to put our value shade sealer on by Exalta. You spray it, and then we can start painting. And a value shade is basically the primer that's going to go underneath the color that is a complementary color. Yes. It, uh, with value shades, it doesn't take that many coats of color to cover it. And when I'm also doing that too, like uh, we want to make sure we have a uniform color so I can't have spots of metal no. sticking out or no. things like that. It really for me, what I love about sealing a vehicle is it's already been wet sanded and it seals everything up. All the imperfections that you might miss, fixed. Gotcha. That's what makes them paint jobs look so slick. Right. It's a little secret. If you don't have a solid foundation, you're not going to have a you're solid right. color and you're not going to have a solid you're paint exactly job. exactly right. I see, I see. Well, we've got our bug all sealed up. We're ready to shoot our candy on there. What exactly is candy? Let's find out from Chris and Kathy. Just like there are well more than 31 flavors of ice cream, you know what? There are a lot of different colors of candy. But Chris, first of all, what I want to find out is what is candy? Well, a traditional candy is where the painter would spray down either a gold or a silver base, and then he would put a dye into his clear coat and spray that over the whole car to get a nice, big, deep finish. Okay, that sounds like a lot of work. And you guys have come up with a much easier way to accomplish the same thing. That's right. Exalta has come up with a very unique and wonderful way to get that beautiful, bright look. We've got our candy CFXs, and it's a, basically a base coat. You spray the car like you would spray any other vehicle. But inside that base coat is that candy dye. Right. That gives it that look. And that floats and migrates up after you clear coat the vehicle to the clear coat and gives you that beautiful depth like we see here. Oh, I know. Just in so many different colors and so many different ways to really bring out such a cool finish. And you know what I'm beginning to wonder is what color is PJ going to pick out? Let's check in with Dave. I love the colors that you're shooting on these cars. Thank you. I know you're not just going to the shelf and pulling those off. No, I'm not. Let me show you real quick here. This is the original paint chart from 1962. This is the original color. But my customer wants some bling to it. So, first thing popped in my mind, I called Harry Exalta. He sent me the Hot Hues candy chart. Right. Right here. Blue Moon. But then I showed my customer, he's like, I love it, but it's a little too dark. Is there any way, do they have another color? I said, let me tell you how easy this is. To, I can tone it down, don't worry. So, I started working on this. Well, for example, okay, look at this. Two blues, one's dark, one's light. So, same blue dye, different Zarette Pearl under it. Ah. Okay, this is, let me show you how I did it. Okay. First, I did a value shade color okay. first, you know, I, I, for my spray outs. Then, I did this. Eh, just didn't look right. Got a little bit better, but it wasn't it. And so forth, and so forth. But then, when I got to this, I just knew. Then I called him. He came up. He loved it. He absolutely loved it. So that's where we got to. 
Well, yeah, when you hit the right color, man, you just mm -hmm. know it right down to your bones. Oh, yeah. We got to check back with Kathy and see what we're doing next. You know, it's not all about candy around here. We like our ice cream, too. And this ice cream truck, it didn't start off looking as awesome as it does. You know what? There was a lot of prep that went into this. Just like we're seeing on our VW Bug, what I'm ready for is to see some of this awesome color. And we're going to do that when we come back with more Performance TV. I'm ready for a treat. Welcome back to Performance TV. Well, as you can see, PJ is really into radio-controlled tanks and putting his own little customization and paint on each one. But what he really specializes in here at B-Rod or Custom would be full-size vehicle paint jobs, just like this very special 1969 Ford LTD owned by Lonnie Mack, who was a big influence on so many guitar players back in the day, like Stevie Ray Vaughan. Well, what I can't wait to see is this beautiful color of paint that they've picked out for our Volkswagen Bug. And let's check in with PJ and Dave. Our color's all mixed up. How do you like to shoot that? Well, for me, I like to cut everything in, get all the nicks and crannies, and then I'll put one light coat, uh, color over it, my first coat. And then I'll wait, probably wait 20 minutes, and I'll come in for my second coat, repeat that process again. Then my third coat. I'll start spraying it and then kind of watching how the paint lays down and make sure it's all consistent and the spray pattern and technique is the same. I see. So we shoot our nooks and crannies because if we shoot our mass first, we're going to lose our nooks and crannies. Then we're shooting on light coats because I know one of the problems I have when I shoot is that you get that motley. You get the oh, uh, yeah. metal flake that dance and move around yeah. and stuff. So you're going with uh, a, a light coat so you don't have to worry yes. about it when you shoot it thick then you get all that dancing around kind of thing. And you really don't need that much material on, like you would think. A lot of people, they'll just load it up. Right. You really don't need it. If you just take your time and do three nice even coats, you're just safe. Okay, that sounds good. Would I go more coats if I was paranoid about motley or anything like that? You can. I, me personally, I don't do that. But some people, they'll, they'll keep on putting a little bit more coats on, but you really don't need to. You need to just kind of watch what, how you spray it and be consistent. I see, I see. Let's check back with Kathy and Chris and learn more about the Exalta line. Well, I'll tell you what, this color is going to be absolutely phenomenal. Now, there are different technologies, Chris, when it comes to working with the, the candies and everything. And we're working with the solvent base today. That's right. It's a more familiar technology to most painters out there. What about with the waterborne, especially Exalta's waterborne? Well, our waterborne is a very productive system. Exalta has got an exclusive on what we call the coat and a half technology. Really? Yeah, well, you watched PJ spray this car, and he put down a coat of his solvent borne base coat, CFX, then he flashed it. Then he came back and put on another one, and then he came back and put on another one. Right. With Exalta's waterborne, you put on a cover coat, back the spray gun off and put on an orientation coat, dry the panel and apply the clear. Well, wow, that, that could help out some shops that are really trying to move more vehicles through that type of thing with, with productivity. But you guys covered Exalta no matter which uh, system that the painters want to work with. This solvent-based system I've been watching today, and of course PJ is a great painter. This is just going to be absolutely phenomenal. We need to bring out the color with the clear. Let's check in with PJ and Dave. Our gorgeous color is laid down, but what really sets it off is the clear coat. Now, I was watching you when you laid this down, and it seemed like you had a specific routine. Well, what you're thinking when you're doing that? Well, for me, this is the critical part. In your first coat, you need to put it on a little wet, but not too much. But for me, I cut everything in first, so I know I have clear there. And then, my second coat, I do the same thing, but I, I concentrate in the areas I know I'm going to wet sand buff. I see. And then my third coat, I do it all over, everything, to burn everything in, and it just kind of brings it all together. So it's consistency. That's what you want in spray technique. The three T's, time, technique, and temperature. Ah. Well, we got to get this thing out in the sun and see what it looks like, but 
you gotta check this out first. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's Evaporust question and answer session. Our first question is, will Evaporust remove rust stains from a toilet bowl? From a toilet bowl? Yes. Actually, Evaporust does not remove stains. It has to have rust on metal to function. It's weird, but that's what has to happen. So it's not gonna remove it from concrete or anything like that? No, no or toilet bowls. Oh, and I have a question for you. Oh yeah? What's brown and sticky? Really? A stick. <laughs> Next is from Ralph. I have used your product to de-rust a number of parts from a 1947 International Harvester. Unfortunately, I let the solution set for too long before decaning it back into the original container. Now the baking tray contains little to no liquid. Can I still add distilled water and reconstitute the solution for additional use? Well, this is a problem that happens a lot. Let's go over to the workshop and let me show you how to take care of evaporust. When evaporust gets left open, water will evaporate out mm -hmm. of it and you'll get what's left, which is the chemical, it'll even evaporate all the way down to completely dry like this. Typically you come in and it's kind of gooey looking like this. All I, what I always say is make a mark where you're completely full and then when you come back in and you don't have any water in it, just add your water right to it. When you get to that line, stir it up and you're ready to go again. Easy enough. And so people say, well, when do I know when it's spent? Right. Well, this is fresh. And this that. is spent. You see mm, that? Looks that looks like, like burnt motor oil. It, it is yucky. It, and it smells delicious. No, I don't. I'm fine. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that's a vapor rust when it's spent. You can't even see through it. Right. Excellent. Well, if you have any other questions, please visit our website. Wow, PJ, you know what? To really see how a paint job looks, you bring it outside, and I am impressed. Thank you. Thank you. It got a little bling to it there. Yeah, yeah, and the clear coat's nice and flat yeah. and smooth. Mm -hmm. You know, the candies is just really something else. I love it. I mean, it's so easy to use. I can't stress how versatile it is. Well, I loved, how, you know, seeing how you guys came up with this specific color, which was really pretty cool. So that makes it extra unique. Oh, yeah. I think we're going to call it Bomb Pop Blue. Because <laughs> I sell ice cream out of the ice cream truck and it's screaming Bomb Pop. You know what? I, I think that pretty much nails it. Hey, thank you for having us here. And we've really enjoyed our visit today. Thank you, guys. And we're learning a lot thank of stuff you. about Exalta as well. You know what? We have a whole lot more of Performance TV, and we'll check that out right after this. Performance TV is being brought to you by Machinist Mate, dedicated to bringing new revolutionary cleaning products to the market. Steel rubber products, quality crafted rubber parts and weather stripping. Borla, the world's most winning exhaust. And by Dustless Blasting, it's the future of surface preparation. This week's Gen Y Hitch towing tip, we're going to be talking about weight distribution. And Carl, not only is that going to help your towing be so much easier, better, more comfortable, but it has a lot to do with safety. Yes, uh, weight distribution is really important, especially for the, the heavier loads. A lot of people tow these stackers behind the motorhomes, even a heavy load behind a pickup truck. Weight distribution is really important. And we have our setup here where it incorporates right into our hitch, which works with any of our hitch systems. Right, so it doesn't have to be a motorhome. No, right? no. You know, because we don't want to see your pickup truck going down the road, like, you know, with its nose in the exactly, air. Exactly, yeah. And basically, it's just a part where it mounts right onto our existing ball mount. Then uh, your bars actually slide right in there. I can show you here. Have our chain to go yeah, back. Chain, hook it in there. And we'll have one of those on both sides. Yes. And here's a spot to put the side mount sway control on. So that actually mounts right on here too as well. And of course, like you said, it works with all of your different hitches. You're still going to have the versatility of up and down on your adjustment and your height and so much more. And this is just going to make a big difference going down the highway. Oh, exactly. It kind of binds everything together and you actually relieve some tongue weight off of the back end of your vehicle. 
That's awesome. And of course, we got along with the torsion hitch here. So this system is really ready to go and tow down the highway. And you know what? They've got something, whether you have a motorhome, you have a small half ton truck, big trucks, check out Gen Y Hitch and what they have for you at their website at genyhitch.com. On this week's clamp tight close up, Nikki is going to show us how to use the clamp tight tool as a banding tool. You actually don't need to buy a separate tool. Nikki, how does this work? Well, it works great, especially if you're working with PVC. You can actually band these together. So let me show you how to do it on some PEX plumbing. Take your wire, bring your ends together, make a loop. You're just going to feed the wires up through the loop, pull it tight, and then we're going to do that one more time right up through the center of the first one. So just get that nice, even seal all the way around. I go through, make sure I'm not crossed or twisted, just like so. So now we take the tool. Take the nose of the tool, place it right up underneath that loop, wrap it up and around each of the pegs, and twist it together, just like a bread tie. There's a little knot to the bottom of the tool, that's what the loop goes into. And then you just start turning. So as you can see, what it's doing is pushing and pulling on the wire and tightening the wire around the project so you're getting a nice, even seal all the way around. So it's really going to get nice and tight and band these three pieces of PEX together. So once you get it to the tightness you want it to be, you'll start to feel it. It's going to start getting hard to turn, and you can actually see it's starting to indent on those, on those pipes. So now you're ready to close it off. You just simply flip it over. That locks it in place. Loosen it. Pull the tool away. Take your cutters. Cut about a quarter of an inch or so, bend those tabs down, and there you go. You're all banded together. Well, this is an incredibly versatile tool. The number of uses are only limited by your imagination. For more information and for how-to videos, go to clamptighttools.com. Well, that's all we have time for this week. Hey, if you have a product that you would like to have featured on television, just contact Jeff at MastersTV.com, and we'll have so much more again next week on Performance TV.